What's up guys, welcome back to Rugged Adventures. If you have a Freedom Seed dispenser like this, or any other model, any other length, any brand, uh, if it's Barrett, if it's Daniel Defense, even if it's Palmetto State or Anderson Manufacturing, it's pretty worthless without something on it to guide your Freedom Seeds. And uh, you know, a lot of cases people either use iron sights or in a lot of cases, the red dot sight and you know, in this case in EOTech 512. And those are great, especially if you wanna do things like be real tucked in, close combat, things like that. Uh, you know, for example, if you wanted to be really, really up close, rapid fire, you wanna do that. Or if you wanted to be in a compromised position or if you needed to be very much tucked in and you had to, this works great because it is very, you don't have to be in the correct eye box in order for this to work. For example, if you're tucked in against the wall here and you can just get your head around, you can still make accurate shots all day long. And have this sight move around because if you look through one of these, if you're familiar with a typical holographic sight, wherever that dot is, no matter where your head is, is where uh, you know that bullet is going to go but if you have a firearm that has a little bit longer barrel on it and you may want a little bit more range out of it or you want to be able to see better you want to be able to identify your targets and make sure that the yellow uh, torso that you're hitting out there is the yellow steel target that you have and not an errant highway worker that's now walking through the woods Something like an LPVO is a fantastic option for that. And this right here is a uh, SIG Tango MSR 1 uh, to 6 by 24. And these LPVOs have become incredibly popular as of late. Uh, there have been all over all of the major gun channels. And it, a lot of times they are showing you all the highest end models, typically. A lot of times these folks give these things to, you know, get, give them to them by SIG or by a gun, uh, uh, you know, distributor. And that's fine. I'm all about that. You, this channel is so far is completely financed by viewers like you. It's like the NPR of gun channels. And so when I was buying this, I was purchasing this out of my own funds, out of the, the stuff that I get from you all. So if you haven't yet, uh, be sure to subscribe down below. Hit the like button if you like gun stuff and, and shooting and things. Uh, and I went ahead and picked this up because after I had looked at quite a few LPVOs, I know Primary Arms makes one that, that's very similar, that's also very popular. I found this one to have the best uh, value, in my opinion, versus any of the other any of the other brands. And and there is a reason why uh, I think that there's there are three things that the Sig uh, Tango MSR one to six by twenty four does that really none of the other ones do. And they're small things, but when you're down in this price range and this that you know I got this for just over three hundred with tax and shipping and everything. The little things make a big difference because, you know, a $30 mount here or a $60 thing here or something like that, that starts adding up to be quite a bit of money that if you are looking for a budget scope, you're probably on a budget. And the things that I really liked about this is, uh, you know, that it was a one to six that's from a reputable company, uh, but it comes with the mount. And this is where a lot of uh, uh, other ones don't. They do not come with the mount for the optic at all, and that's something you have to buy separately. And they're usually not terribly expensive, but it really is nice, especially if someone's buying an entry-level LPVO rifle scope, that they can get that and not have to pay additional money for it. They also include, and this is, sounds crazy to me, but they include this throw lever. This just screws in, and you don't have to use it. And most folks say, go ahead, when you're done and you have it set, put some Loctite on there because it can vibrate loose. If you want to use it, some people like to use it, some don't. This comes included. Again, this is another like $5, $10, $15. I don't even know what it would cost. Probably not a lot, but it is just something that I think should be included in an LPVO. And, you know, I know that might raise the price for everyone that doesn't want it, but uh, just something I think should be included. Now, what I think that this uh, LPVO does really well is they include, if this thing focuses on it, which it probably won't, it's probably going to focus on my face unless I get out of the camera, they include all the fastener torque specifications right on the actual scope itself. You don't have to go digging through a manual to try to find these. In addition, they put a level line right here. So you're not trying to have to set a level here on top of your uh, top cap in order to get this thing set up. You just, you pop this onto your pick rail, you pop this onto here, align it with that level line, 
put the torque specs that are written on here so you don't have to go to your manual and you can go and just and, and do the thing. And what this really does, and what I really like about these LPVO uh, scopes, is it gives you just a little bit more uh, view of the target that you're going to be that you're going to be shooting at. With that 512, it's a great sight, and you can add a magnifier to it. But it, uh, you know, you start getting out beyond 75 yards, definitely 100 yards. Me with 2015 vision cannot see the grid on the. Uh, on the on, on a target and so with this i can i'm able to dial it in a little bit better than i am with a uh with a uh, with the eotech or something like that just right from the start and so you know let me show you how you can use this sort of like a red dot because that's kind of the idea is that in 1x mode you should be able to uh you know basically use it like a red dot and it's not the same, you know, it, it's just not, and it probably won't ever be because you're supposed to use the red dot, like an, uh, like a, a EOTech there, with both eyes open. And you can do that with this. It looks kind of weird, and there is a little bit of glass distortion on the edges. Again, for 300 bucks, I'm not really going to complain about it. But uh, let's load some stuff up here and, uh, and kind of just show you how it works. When we have it back here on 1X, and this is the whole thing of the LPVO, is that you can get uh, the best kind of the, a mixture of a red dot and a legitimate like long range rifle scope. So if we have it here on 1X, we can sort of use it like a, uh, like a red dot, like that uh, EOTech 512. You can have both eyes open. It is sort of kind of weird. But uh, you can do it either way, and you can just kind of rapid fire like you do with with a, uh, with a red dot. It's pretty easy. Then if you want to get, you know, midway out there, you maybe dial it up to three. Uh, there's a target of 50 yards. It's got a grid on it that you want to hit. You hit it three, and you can hit it repeatedly. Whereas on one, you know, it's a pretty big target. You may be able to hit it repeatedly. Actually, it sort of looks smaller through this on one X than it does. Uh, just looking at the barrel, but you know, it's not too terribly hard to hit. The biggest thing about this is Is that when you get out to two three four hundred yards if you have those shots And we don't have those here the biggest we're gonna be able to get is two maybe three maybe 400 if we could cut it, you know across like that and have a safe backstop still uh, Before we get to the next hillside, but you get out here to 200 or more and especially if you put this thing on a rest now you can dial this thing up and you can really see what it is that you are shooting at. And you can point to a particular part on that target versus a red dot where you're just kind of getting a, uh, you know, a, an area. You can see it. You may be able to make a torso shot on it. And it's hard for me to hear, but I think we got a bunch of hits on it. You can do that repeatedly with a, you know, relatively low cost, low power, uh, you know, system altogether. This rifle here is only like 500 bucks. This is, you know, $300, throw some ammo in it, and you got yourself, uh, you know, an $800 gun that can repeatedly hit at two to 300 yards. Now, the biggest thing that I wanted to really go over with this is its relationship to its, you know, close relative, the, uh, the Tango 6. This is the one that uh, the military has just taken a contract on for, for our armed forces. And SIG has been getting a lot of military contracts. And this is where people are going to be like, well, you're stupid. You don't know what you're talking about, whatever. I've been in a lot of factories for my actual job. I see a lot of things being made from food to materials to cars. <clears throat> a lot of cases, the low end model is built with a lot of the same components as the high end model. Now, I'm not going to say that this, this Tango MSR and the, uh, the Tango 6 are going to have the same glass. It's obviously not the case. This is probably where they saved all of their money is in the glass um, and in the, the, the magnification systems. That's, and that's the case. There is some fish eye to this. Uh, the eye relief is not bad um, as far as, especially on 1X, the eye relief isn't too terribly bad. You can be, you know, anywhere from here back to here-ish and, and you're good. Uh, the eye box on 1X is not terrible, depending on where you are in the eye relief. When you get up to 6X, that's where things kind of become a little bit, uh, you know, wonky. You can get from about here to here with your eye relief. It's gotta be just right. 
But when on 6X, the eye box is very, very narrow. And so you're, when you put, set this up and you, when you put this together, you're gonna wanna spend a lot of time in different positions, prone, you know, maybe shooting from a rest, maybe shooting from standing to get this set up exactly right for your cheek weld. And when you have on ears, and if you had a helmet or anything else that you wanna have on, it is going to make this a little bit harder to set up to be exactly right for what you want. But back to the uh, Tango 6, if you look at it, if you look at the specs, it's the same, you know, one to six by 24. It probably uses the same tube. It probably uses the same seals, the same uh, um, um, variable optic mechanism here. I would, I would venture to say that a lot of the parts outside of the glass are, are probably the same. This one is a one half MOA uh, adjustment here. This is kind of my one beef with this uh, with this entire thing. Not that it's a one half MOA because this is not a precision rifle scope. This is basically a, uh, a range extender. This isn't going to make you the next Chris Kyle. But what it has is uh, when you turn these, if you guys are familiar with rifle scopes, a lot of times you get that nice satisfying audible click. Feels very crisp. On this one, it does have a nice click, but it is kind of a mushy turn. And I don't know if over time that'll get better, if things are, you know, very sealed up, not very nice uh, for weather and all that, um, that it will get better. But it doesn't really matter because once I have this sighted in once, I don't intend to have to do it again. And I don't know what's going on with this thing, but we'll set that aside for the time being. Uh, it does have an illuminated uh, reticle. It goes from 1 to 11. On 11, it's decent in broad daylight. It's not uh, the brightest um, reticle that there is out there, but again, this is a $300 rifle scope, and you know, you, at some point, you do get what you pay for. Let's see if I can get the thing back on there. There we go. It does have the flap caps that go on the end. I'm not a real big fan of those. I feel like they kind of get in the way. If you need to adjust your diopter, which is here, which is adjust the reticle to your individual eye, which is going to be different from everyone, um, it gets in the way. It sort of gets in the way of if you're if you want to throw this real fast, it'll get you know kind of. Uh, Oh, here, I'll just put it on and I'll show you. And you put that on and it's sitting there and then you're trying to adjust this and you're turning this and this is moving your diopter setting. It's just, I don't really like these things. So these will probably not be on anymore. And if they get, if these things get dirty, not a big deal. Another thing that I did see from another creator that I haven't had a chance to test out myself is why not go to a one to eight or one to 10. And this being a second focal plane uh, optic, you're going to um, need to be zoomed in all the way in order for your bullet drop uh, compensator reticle to be anywhere accurate, even if it is at all. And so if you have one of those one to eights or one to tens, and it's a lower end model like this, um, that's, that, that doesn't have that, that pristine glass of those, you know, $1,000 or $2,000 uh, rifle scopes, as you dial this in, you are going to get more distortion, uh, you know, out in the horizon. And this one, I will tell you, is, you know, you start getting out there to, you know, 300 or so is probably at the top of the ridge there. And things are not as crisp as they are when you're in close. And so if you have to dial that all the way in to get the uh, bullet drop ca compensator, if that's something that you're interested in, if you're shooting at five, six, seven hundred yards, um, the one to six is going to have less distortion than the one to 10. And like my final thoughts on this are use what you're going to, know what you're, what you're going to be, you know, using this in before you go out and buy something that's super expensive is and is the best thing on the market. If you are filming with Grand Thumb and you are in the middle of the West where you have 800 yard, 1000 yard or, or more shots, you're going to want to have a very high end rifle scope to make that thing happen. Here, two, three, 400 yards are gonna be our max. And so there's no reason to spend $1,500 on a rifle scope when you only need to go 200 yards with something like this. So that's just some food for thought. So again, guys, hit the like button for me, subscribe down below. I appreciate you watching today and I'll see you in the next one.